Y'all still bills? What's the deal, man? Yo, I'm um about to make me a real quick store run, man. And while I'm doing that, I fear I come and chop it up with the homies, man. But peep game, we gotta get into this shit, man. And that's um Beck the bully. First off, man, let me say this, man. Uh, 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 Alantis Fox. Every time I see this nigga, he getting crashed, bro. And, you know, I, I be feeling bad for the brother. Like, God damn. God damn. At 154 pounds, you was getting crashed. And now, you know, you just, you're blessed with a natural advantage that should, you know, you should be able to make these fights a lot more difficult than what they actually end up being. You just go in there and get doormatted, bro. You six foot five. You should not be going in there getting violated like this. Like, you know, you do good in the first 30 seconds, and then the minute pressure just gets applied to you, you just fold like clean clothes, my nigga. Like, what is we doing? And, I, you know, it's cringeworthy. It's, cringe, it's, it's cringy watching it, but I'm sitting there like, God damn, brother, come on. I fuck with Beck the bully, man, but I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm watching this fight, like, and I just keep saying, like, come on, brother. That man came out right in the first round and hit you with thunder. And it immediately, I, like, it, you know, it woke you up. But, you know, you sense the, you also sense the, uh, the, you know, the heightened danger within there. And you just, you, it's like you panicked. And what you panicked in, man, it just, it, it just led to your destruction. You, you, the mom sitting here like, come on, bro. God damn. Man, it just, I, I don't know, Brody. I don't know about you, man. But, um. It, it just, I hate seeing that, man. I, I hate seeing that. Every time you get some sort of a step up fight, you end up being on the receiving end. And it ain't, it, it, it's not like it don't even be competitive, man. Goddamn. David Morrell, Demetrius, Andre, now Beck the Bully, bro. They just go in there and just Debo you. And you just, you just succumb to the pressure. Like, it's not even a fight. You win all these other fights and then you get in a position where you fight somebody with a notable name and you crumble and it's not even like our over the duration of the fight it's like you know all right cool he's doing good if he can maintain this you know he's done good the first half of the fight he's done good the first three rounds of the fight he's done good the first four rounds of the fight if he can maintain this he could possibly squeak out a victory it's none of that it's none of that you stick a jab in their face, you circle the perimeter of the ring for the first few minutes, of the, for the first minute of the fight, and then after that, it's just downhill for you. Fucking hell, man. God damn. But anyways, man, back to Bully, man. I'm, you know, I'm watching him, and clearly you see who he's influenced by, clearly from the socks, from the bounce in his step with the feet, how he throws the left hand. All of that, you you clearly see who he's influenced by. You know, what I mean? it's a Uzbek, a, a Uzbekistan Manny, Uzbekistan man. He clearly gets his influences from Manny Pacquiao. You see it clear as day, man. And no, uh, I mean, just I, I'm I'm like, yo, can we get him? I, I made a, a Facebook status about it last night. Can we get him versus a Carlos Gongora or a um, Christian Mobili? Can we please get that? Can we please get that? Like, pretty please. Uh, I, I think um, I think that fight with Gabe Rosado, it damn sure wasn't a fluke. It wasn't lucky or nothing like that, man. But Gabe Rosado was a veteran. He was able to get off a well-placed shot, and it paid dividends. But he wasn't supposed to win that fight. He was getting violated that for the first half of that fight, and then he landed that big shit. And it was like, yo, salute to Gabe. Salute to Gabe, but that kind of, I don't want to say it halted his momentum or nothing like that, but it definitely was like, yo, Beck, you allowed this shit to happen to you? Sheesh. But he got his get back earlier this year, and now, you know, he bounces back with Atlantis Fox, man. Like, just, even how he was, you know, just, the, the, dude, the dude is real good on his feet. It's real, you know, for you, for somebody to be that good on their feet. And to be a body snatcher like that, like, bro, that's a that's a sign of, you know, that's a sign of disaster right there for anybody that he's in there with. <laughs> anybody that he's in there with, man, you know, when they can get, you know, get in your blind spots and hit you, you automatically, the minute you get someone steps around you and they're no longer in your peripheral, you're going to think to cover, you know, you're going to cover your face. You're going to, you know, you're going to guard your, you know, you're going to guard up top. You ain't going to tuck your elbow and guard your body. Nah. 
So he's fighting somebody maybe six foot six one who's not six five like Atlantis. He's fighting somebody maybe at the most six foot. He steps around you like that and he digs in the body. That's gonna be disastrous. But I, you know, I'm just watching this dude close distance, man. You know, the dude he could he had no answer for his long, you know, the lead, those long loop and left hooks that he was throwing. He had no answer for nothing. He was getting hit clean. And his legs buckled in the first round. Like, Fox, what are you doing, bro? God damn. Fuck. But Beck got in there. He did. He debulked that nigga. He bullied him. He bullied that dude. Bullied him. Dig into the body, man. You know, he, you know he's countering at mid-range. Countering, I'm talking, you know, uh, 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 pull counters, bro, at mid range, bro. You six foot five, getting countered like that at mid range by this dude in the middle of the ring, bro. What are we doing, man? Come on, man. Come on, god damn. But I do think it is time for us to see Beck the Bully in there with somebody of note, man. Um, Gabe Rosado was a good win for him, a good get back win. It was a bad, bad loss for him, but a good win for him as well because of who he's been in there with. He wasn't able to get the stoppage. I think he dropped him, you know, a couple of times, but he went in there, he avenged that loss, sent Gabe Rosado into retirement. All right, boom, we passed that now. Now let's get him in there with someone who's a little up higher up in the rankings, man. Can we? I think Carlos Gungora, I think that should be the next move for him. I think that should be the next move for him, man. I don't think Gungora is going to be a champion or nothing like that. I just think he's going to be a real solid gatekeeper. He's going to be a real solid, and he's going to make you work for it. And he's going to give anybody in the division problems. Anybody. He's going to give anybody in the division problems. Carlos Gungora is a very good fighter. Very good, but very competent fighter, bro. I, I, I would like to see that. Beck the Bully versus 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 Gungora. I would I would love to see that. I would love to see that. I kind of want to say I don't want to say Diego Pacheco just yet. Because I know that you know they're both golden boy fighters. I don't, so I'm kind of apprehensive to say Pacheco. I don't know if I want him in there with, uh, with Pacheco yet. Just give, you know, give Pacheco a few more. You know, a few more fights because I, I think I think he got I think Oscar has a diamond in the rough with Diego Pacheco. That's just me personally. That's how I'm feeling. Every time I see that kid, he's stepping up. So I don't want to put him in there just yet with someone like a with, with Beck the Bully. I think Beck the Bully's um I think his um he, you know his his level of competition has been a, you know significantly more strenuous than Diego Pacheco. So I think that may be a little, you know, just a little, just right now, this may be just a little, you know, biting off a little bit more you can chew. Biting off just a little bit more than you can chew. But I don't know. But I would just, I just think with Beck the Bully, put him in there with somebody like a Carlos Gungora. And I would not mind a Christian Mabili. I would not mind Mabili. Mabili versus motherfucking, um, versus uh, Beck. Mabili versus the Bully. Oh, yeah. That's a vibe right there. That's going to be a violent violent, violent fight. And I'm all for it. I'm all for that shit, man. But Beck the Bully looked real sharp in there last night, man. I'm just, he's bouncy as fuck. He is, he's bouncy. The way he gets out of the pocket, he shifts, he side to side. He closes range well, and he's a prolific body puncher, man. He tried, like, he hit Atlanta so hard to the bottom. I thought he hit him up top. Cause when he hit him, I'm like, yo, did he get, I seen his legs like weevilly wobbly. I'm like, yo, did he get hit in the head? And then I just seen him bend the knee. I'm like, fuck. And then they go back and they look at the replay and I see he got clipped to the body. Damn. Fuck. Damn, yo, that dude is devious, man. Um, Back to bully, my nigga. Get that man his flowers. I, um. I'm fucking with the dude, bro. I'm fucking with him. I'm definitely fucking with him. I mean, shit, you got Jaime Munguia over there. Put him in there with Jaime. Put him in there with Jaime. Jaime is officially a 168-pounder. You're talking about 
like one thing, you know, just I think you owe it to Jaime's fan base and you owe it to Jaime to really test himself. He had a damn good test with the Revianchenko. He definitely did. The Revianchenko showed up to the occasion. He did. I was really surprised with the Revianchenko. But I think um, Beck the Bully is a lot fresher than the Revianchenko. He isn't nearly as war torn. He's active. He has a loss. Yeah, he has a knockout loss. It happens. It happens. But I, I think um, with Jaime, someone like a Beck the Bully who's off a win, I think that's dope because they're trying to put him in there with John Ryder. And I'm just, you know, I th- I'm, I'm definitely going to watch that fight because I think it's a good fight. And I think if he's able to, if he's able to deal with John Ryder, all right, cool. Even if he loses to John Ryder and he's able to be competitive in that fight, all right, cool. I can, I can, I can accept that because John Ryder has some notable wins up there at 168 pounds. But John Ryder is off a loss and a broken nose, man. Why are you looking to go for him? Even though I think it's a good fight, why wouldn't you be looking to go for somebody who's a little bit more, you know, they have a win under their belt and they ready to, you know, they shit, man. Let's get into this next bout. I think Beck the Bully and Jaime Munguia is a good fight. I think, and I think, I think Beck can, I think Beck can beat Jaime Munguia. I'd put my money on Beck the Bully to beat Jaime Munguia. You know, I, 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 I do. I think, you know, I think it's time for Oscar to throw Jaime in there with somebody who, all right, cool. You clearly ain't ready for title contention up there in them higher divisions. Whatever the fuck ever. Okay, cool. If you're going to allow him to lose, allow him to lose some, to somebody to where he may not be at risk of getting knocked out, but the holes in his game could really be highlighted and y'all can begin to go back and work on that. Go back to the drawing board and work on that. I think Beck the Bully would be the perfect opponent for someone like a Hyman Mungi. They both got something to lose. They're both higher up in the rankings than someone like a, yo, they closed down Menards over here? That shit crazy. But they both got something to lose. They um they're a lot more high up in the rankings and you dig that, you know, than um than someone like a Diego Pacheco. Yep, yeah. Feed him that feed Jaime the goddamn Beck the Bully. Give him the Beck. That's an in-house fight. That's an easy fight to make. It ain't gonna be no expensive fight. You're gonna get a good, you're you gonna get a good showing for that fight. We I, yeah. Yep. That's the fight I want next for Jaime Mongia. Both of y'all are coming off of wins. Good wins. Good wins. I think Beck the Bully's win is a lot more thorough because it was no controversy in that win. I do think. The Revian Chinko beat Jaime Munguia. I thought he did enough early on in the fight to win that fight. I, I just, I do. I think he won that fight. But, you know, it is what it is. You dig? You, hey, whatever the fuck ever. He, you know, he he, he was able to squeak out, out the victory, whatever. He dropped him in the last round, hurt him bad, whatever. He got that, you know, he's still undefeated. He has no zero. He, ha- he still has a zero in the loss column. So give him back the bully. Let's get that fight next. I think that's a that right there is really gonna tell a tale of where Jaime is at within the rankings and just within his um, with, you know just how solid of a fighter he is. Is there any more spots to close? Nope, I gotta go right here. You gotta go right here. Jaime versus Beck the Bully is the perfect matchup, bro. For Golden Boy. That fight is going to generate a lot of interest, man. And I'm all here for it, man. So let's get that fight underway. Don't waste no more time on Jaime Munguia. Throw him in there to the wolves. Doses.